Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at CPA questions that deal with foreign currency adjustments and translation. These topics are covered in financial accounting and reporting CPA exam and on my website I cover those topics in details in depth in my advanced accounting as well as international accounting. So if you are looking for more and I've for sure you're going to be looking for more unless you are competent in this topic you will need to go to my advanced accounting and i have two chapters about this topic and in, in my international accounting i have three chapters plus illustrations plus examples so you want to make sure when you go into the cpa exam you are comfortable with foreign currency adjustments and translation as always i would i would like to remind you to connect with me on linkedin if you haven't done so youtube is where you would need to subscribe i have 1700 plus accounting auditing tax finance as well as excel tutorial if you like my lectures please like them share them subscribe to the channel put them in playlist if they benefit you it means they might benefit other people share the wealth connect with me on instagram on my website, farhatlectures.com, and this is where you have access to my advanced accounting course, international accounting, and one subscription gives you access to everything, as well as 2,000 plus CPA questions. If you're looking to improve your CPA score 10 to 15 points, if you're looking to supplement or complement your accounting courses, check out my website. Let's take a look at the first question to have a kind of a basic understanding of this topic. You know, by looking at these questions, you're not going to be able to learn everything, but you'll be able to find out what, what am I lacking? What do I know? Test yourself. And this is the purpose of taking exam is to find out what you don't know. What you know is not really beneficial for you. If you know something, then it's there's no value to it because you already know it. The value is when you find out I am lacking somewhere, then you can zoom in to find out what are you lacking and what can you do about that issue. So let's take a look at the first question. Let's take a look at the first question. With regard to the foreign currency accounting, which of the following are included in the determination of net income for the period? So here they're giving us two, two type of adjustments. They're giving us three measurement adjustments as well as translation adjustment. And the question is, the first thing you need to know is, where does the remeasurement adjustment appears and where does the translation adjustment appears because that's important if you don't know where do they appear then you can you can do the computation correctly but if you don't know where do they appear do they appear in net income do they appear in oci then you will get the question incorrect so that's the first thing for example do you know where does the remeasurement adjustment appear well you need to know that the remeasurement adjustment appear on the income statement therefore it goes into the determination of net income that's what you have to know just basically memorizing but when you are dealing with remeasurement it involves many steps but the most important step to know is do you know that it goes on the income statement therefore the answer is a where does the translation adjustment appears we're gonna find out soon Let's take a look at this question. Sioux Industries has international subsidiaries in Asia. These industries enter into contract in both US dollar as well as local currencies. In year 13, Sioux Industries experienced a remeasurement loss and a translation gain of 36,000. As a result of this conversion, what would Sioux Industries report and accumulated other comprehensive income? Simply put, you are giving two things. You are giving remeasurement loss and you are giving translation gain and they're asking you which of these two will appear in accumulated other comprehensive income let's take a look at this prior question in this prior question we we already determined that remeasurement adjustment which is either re remeasurement gain or re remeasurement loss are reported in the income statement therefore here translation do you know where the trend so we already know so the 55,000 cannot be the answer because the 55,000, we already know that remeasurement is income statement. Therefore, the question becomes, do you net them? Do you net 36 and 55? And you don't net them. You don't net them. So in case you, some people say, okay, let, let me net them. Well, you don't net them. Then with, so, so simply put, the question becomes, do you know where translation gains go? Well, translation goes into a o c i accumulated other comprehensive income therefore the answer is d now i already told you this and you have to know this well that's easy that's easy peasy <laughs> translation gaze translation gaze translation gains go into oci but what i want to tell you is 
when you when you have to know the steps to perform translation because you could see this as a simulation you could or you could see translation in a multiple choice question all what i'm asking you here to know do you know where the translation go do you know where re remeasurement goes so those are simple concept but when you practice them you need to know much much more and that's why i refer you to farhat lectures because when you take a cpa course they might spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes explaining remeasurement and explaining translation that's it or maybe half an hour about both topics. On my website, I spend two to three hours in each course, and in my international accounting, I spend four to five hours because, because I go over several examples in details, and I'm talking hours, not minutes. In this way, you have a good understanding walk into the, walking into the exam. You have full confidence if they throw anything at you. Let's take a look at this question. Which of the following would result in a purchasing power decline? purchasing power decline what does that mean it means you are losing your purchasing power you are losing your purchasing power and when would you lose your purchasing power think about it will you lose your purchasing power when there is inflation so if you have money if you have a hundred dollar today and this hundred dollar can buy you let's assume the cup the cup of coffee is for two dollars at Wawa you'll be able to buy 50 cups of coffee okay what happened if the cups of coffee at Wawa goes to $3? So we have inflation. What's going to happen to your $100? It's going to buy you less than 50 cups of coffee. So you would lose purchasing power. It will buy you less than 50. You know, you can take 100 divided by 3, but it'll buy you less than 50. So which of the following would result in a purchasing power decline? Holding monetary asset. Monetary asset means money. Think of it as money, cash, in a period of deflation. Oh, no, no, no. If you hold money and there's deflation, deflation is the opposite of inflation. Deflation means the cup of coffee at Wawa goes from $2 to $1. Now you can buy 100 cups. Would you lose? Would you lose? Would you lose decline in purchasing power? On the contrary. So A is out. Holding monetary asset in a period of inflation. That's exactly what I said. If you have money and prices go up, inflation means the prices of things go up then you would lose purchasing power. I would say B is the answer. Holding monetary liabilities in a period of inflation, that's good. That's good. Actually, you don't decline. You, that's good for you. If, if you're holding monetary liability, it means simply put, you have a loan at the bank. And let's assume you have a loan and you have a loan for $100,000. That's a liability. You have to pay the loan. Suddenly, inflation kicks in. Now, as a result, your employer increase your salary by 20% because they, you need to keep up with inflation. Now you have more money coming in to you in form of salary, or if you're selling product, you can raise your prices, but your loan of 100,000 is fixed. It stays the same. So now you're making more money because of inflation, but your liability is fixed. Now you are better off. It's going to result in a purchasing power improvement. Why? Because now you could pay off your loan quickly and have more money for other things. So that's the good thing about holding monetary liability in period of inflation. So that's that's the good that's the good thing. That's the good thing. Okay. Let's take a look at this question. On October fifth, year thirteen, Griffin purchased merchandise from an affiliate in Taiwan for twenty thousand Taiwan dollar when the spot rate was 0.65. Griffin paid the bill in full in February year 14 when the spot rate was 0.74. The spot rate was 0 0.80 on December 31st, 2013. So notice we have three different dates. So you have to be very careful. We have October 5th. This is the date of purchase. This is when we made the purchase. We have December 31st end of period, end of the accounting period. And we have the payment that happens on the payment happens on February, February. They don't tell us when in February. February is the payment. So in this question, in this problem, before I read the question, they could be asking about three different things. So it's very important to look at, uh, look at, uh, look at what you are given. Okay, but it's okay. Now we read it. What amount should Griffin report as a foreign currency trans transaction? This is foreign currency transaction gain or loss in its income statement. So transaction gains and losses goes onto the income statement for December 31st, year 2013. So simply put, now we know we have to zoom in on this date because we're giving three different dates, 
three because we are giving three different dates it was a little bit not confusing we have to know what are we what are we what are we what are we being asked we're being asked for the gain or the loss on the eve of december 31st so what does that mean well let's go through this journal entry and see what we will have to do in this in, in this in this problem and i like to walk you through the journal entry so this way you understand this topic because this is a good example for illustration purposes because i can go over the examples and show you exactly what we are doing on the three different dates because they could ask you the question in a different way so this way you are comfortable with this let's start with october Fifth. What happened on October 5th? You made the purchase. You purchased 20,000 worth of merchandise from Taiwan, and the spot rate on that date was 0.65. So what happened is this. On that date, you're going to debit your inventory. Your inventory, it's going to be, your inventory, it's going to be $13,000, because based on the spot rate on that date, and you will credit accounts payable of $13,000. Now remember, this accounts payable in a foreign currency because you have to pay in Taiwanese dollar. Let's fast forward till December 31st. December 31st, what you have to do, you have to sit down and ask yourself, what happened to my, to that, to that investment in accounts payable, to that foreign currency? So you have, basically you have an investment, in this, and not investment, a payment. So you have, in, this, in a sense, it's an investment in this foreign currency because an investment could go up or it could go down. So what happened? On December 31st, if we take $20,000, we multiply it by 0.8. The rate is 0.8. I believe the rate is 0.8. And December 31st, the rate is 0.8. And what's going to happen is now you are responsible for paying 16000 Now what happened to your, to your liability? Your liability is 16000 Hold on a second. My liability is 16,000. That's bad for me. It means I have a loss from foreign currency transaction. FC is foreign currency transaction in the amount of 3,000. Why? Because I need to increase my accounts payable by 3,000. Now my accounts payable, so if I'm looking, if I'm looking at my accounts payable, initially it was I had $13,000 obligation. Now I have to make it 16, so I have to add 3,000. So my liability now, as of December 31st, is 16,000, and I booked the loss of, I booked the loss of 3,000 in my, on the income statement. So remember, this goes in the income statement. And they're telling you in this problem, sometimes the question could be, where does this loss or gain goes? It goes on the income statement. So simply put, we answered the question right there, because they're asking us about December 31st. December 31st, we have a loss, and the loss is 3,000. They could also ask you what happened, what is the loss or the gain uh, year 2014 when we pay it in February? Because remember, we, we don't pay it until year 2014. Let's see what happened on year 2014. In year 2014, the spot rate when we paid it was 74. Look, in year 2014 was 74. So when we were ready to pay this bill, we'll take 20,000 times 0.74. And let's get a calculator to compute this. So if we take 20,000 times 0 0.74, it's 14,800. Now I, oh, when I write the check, I write the check only for 14,800 for a liability of 16,000. What does that mean? Well, let's see what does that mean. Well, on the books, I owed 16,000. I only have to pay 14,800. I have a gain of 1,200. What does that mean? It means on that date, this is the date of the payment. Here's what I would do. I will credit cash, 14,800. I will debit my accounts payable, 16,000, because I have I paid it. I'm no longer responsible for everything, therefore I have to reduce it down to zero. The difference between those two is a gain from, from foreign currency transaction, and the gain is 1,200. The gain is 1,200. Now, uh, you could be asked, what is the net gain or loss for the whole transaction? Well, notice here there is no 1,200 answer, so they're not asking us about this. But they could ask you, what is the net gain or loss on the whole transaction? Well, we had a loss of 3,000, a gain of 200. The overall is a net loss of 1,800. So notice, the net loss of 1,800 is there. As the answer is C, but that's not the question. So you have to be very careful what you are being asked in a question like this. And uh, again, these topics are covered in my advanced accounting 
as well as international accounting so it's very important it's very important that you visit my website if you want additional material additional explanation because in a CPA course they assume you know this they assume you know it and they would review it with you I don't assume anything I will sit down and explain this as this is the first time in your college classroom and the problem with this topic it's one of two things you never took an international accounting course or advanced accounting or when you took them they did not cover those chapters or if they covered those chapters the teacher did not did not do a good job and if the teacher did not do a good job you were not mature enough to pay attention because it was your senior year and you were ready to go no problem visit my website to make up for all those missed time good luck study hard stay safe especially during those coronavirus days